I know, Nisha. And I meant no disrespect. It's just that... I hate waiting around like this, watching him suffer. This is the story of bad medicine and oblivion, and exploring who ordered the contract on the already dying warlord Roderick's life. Re-entering the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary, we seek out Ochiva for our next contract. I am honored by your presence. How can Ochiva be of assistance? I have another contract when you're ready, one that will rely on your ability to remain fully undetected. Fully undetected sounds like quite the challenge. What are the details? Far to the west, there lives a fierce warlord and his company of loyal mercenaries. Your target is the warlord. Do you accept this contract? A chance to take down a fierce warlord? Yes, of course I accept. Excellent. Now listen closely. Nestled in the mountains to the west lies Fort Such. It is the home of the warlord Roderick and his mercenaries. Roderick has recently taken ill. He now lies in eternal slumber, kept alive only by the daily administration of a powerful medicine. You must infiltrate Fort Such, find Roderick's medicine, and replace it with a poisoned bottle I will provide, but you must remain undetected. Whomever arranged this contract wants it to look like Roderick died from his illness, so discretion is essential. Attack no one. Be seen by no one. If you are detected, the poisoning will fail, and Roderick must be killed in some other manner. That will, of course, forfeit your bonus. Achiva then hands us the bottle of poison, and we have but more questions about the assassination, but... She simply presses the urgency of said contract. Roderick may lie near death, but dead he is not. Until his soul has passed, our client, Ancythus, will not be satisfied. With low disposition, Ochiva will state, Actually, I gave you this contract in the hope that whatever Roderick has is contagious and you'll die a slow, lingering death in a matter of days. Otherwise, Ochiva, you said he was ill. Is it safe for us to get close? It's uncertain exactly what illness Roderick has contracted, but don't worry, it's probably not contagious. <laughs> May the Night Mother guide you. Now we are left with even more questions about not only how to infiltrate this Fort Such, but also Roderick's mysterious illness and why someone would opt to hasten said ailment to an early grave. Seeking out fellow Dark Brotherhood companions for clues, we find inside the training room our ex-contract giver, the vampire Vicente Valtieri, who greets. You are like a dark gift from the Night Mother herself. Please, tell me how I can help. Go ahead, please. With low disposition, he says. Roderick is a mercenary leader, and his people are fanatically loyal. They will cut you to ribbons if they see you. And they will see you. Otherwise, I hear my target, Roderick, is surrounded by mercenaries. These mercenary groups tend to be fanatically loyal to whomever leader they follow. Roderick's people will likely fight to the death. Be cautious. Farewell, brother. On the eastern side of the training room is the ever-bobbing Breton, Antoinette Marie. Why do you insist on annoying me? With low disposition, she mocks. I think it says something about Achiever's faith in your abilities when she gives you a contract to kill someone who isn't even conscious. Otherwise, Antoinette, have you heard? We've been tasked with poisoning our latest victim. Oh, using poison is so deliciously evil. I once poisoned my Aunt Stew, and she fell over dead with her face right in the bowl. <laughs> I'll be seeing you then. In the northern living quarters, we find seated at the dining table, the orc Gogren Grow Bolmog. Hail, my brother! With low disposition, he taunts. You, what do you want? Oh, this is gonna be funny. You're going to be the first assassin in Dark Brotherhood history who couldn't even kill an invalid. <laughs> Otherwise, 
Gogren, how would you feel about a contract where the bonus is predicated on not being seen at all? What do you mean nobody can see you? Where's the fun in that? Damn the bonus, I say. Just walk in there and stab him. Later then. It's quite fortuitous so Cheever didn't send the orc to paint such red. But also begs the question, who doesn't want us to be seen and why do they want Roderick gone? Perhaps an inside job of someone close who wants the sick man to look like he died of natural causes. We then turn to speak to the Argonian Teniva. Why do you bother me? With low disposition, he says. For such... It is an impregnable fortress, surrounded by mountains. You'll never even get inside, let alone kill your target. <laughs> Good luck. Otherwise, Teniva, you are masterful at stealth. How would you impregnate Fort Such undetected? Fort Such? I am familiar with that place. It's nestled deep in the mountains. It is naturally well defended, but there is a weakness. Not far from the ruins of Fort Such lies the ruins of a tower. That tower was once part of the Fort Such Abbey. The two ruins lie apart on the surface, but underground they are connected by some now flooded tunnels. Wet and dark, yes, but surely unguarded. May Sithis be with you. Ah, so there is another entry point. That's very interesting. Lastly, we speak to the sleeping wood elf, Talandril. I find your very presence foul. Say what you will and then leave my sight. With low disposition, she complains. This is an outrage. This contract should have gone to me. My stealth skills are unmatched. You will never succeed. Never! Otherwise, Delandril, how would you get to the well-guarded warlord Roderick? Ah, now this is the type of contract I live for. You must become pure shadow. It's as if you were never there. And then Roderick simply dies. May your arrows always strike true. Agreeing with the Wood Elf's assessment, we note we must don our shrouded armor and make our way out of the sanctuary to the western Fort Such. Our quest then updates, reading, I must sneak into Fort Such, find the medicine of the debilitated warlord Roderick, and replace it with the poisoned bottle Ochiva has given me. If I am detected by any of the mercenaries, or if Roderick is killed in any other manner, my bonus is forfeit. Fortunately, I've learned of an alternate way inside that should be unguarded. Not far from the ruins of Fort Such lie the ruins of the Fort Such Abbey. If I enter there, I can get to Fort Such Underground through some flooded tunnels, thanks to Teniva. For those of you interested in Oblivion's behind the scenes, it should be noted, Fort Such was originally the 10th city to feature in Oblivion as seen in game art on screen. However, it was subsequently removed prior to release for reasons still unknown. Although, ironically, it would have featured Kinnereth's missing chapel. And as irony would have it, Fort Such in the final release of the game is dilapidated and has been reclaimed by nature. Arriving just south of the fort located north of Anvil in the Gold Coast, our quest then deviates into two distinct paths. The second option would be more intricate and rewarding if we follow Ochiva's instructions to the letter, which we will of course investigate soon. However, first, let's quickly explore taking the Orc Gogren's advice and barreling our way through the fort, forgoing the bonus and hacking our way to the impaired target Roderick. Entering the main fort's entrance, located underneath its crumbling shell, we then light our torch, forgoing any attempts at stealth and are immediately spotted by the enemy and our quest updates reading. I have been detected by someone in Fort Such. That means the poisoning will fail. 
I must now kill Roderick the old-fashioned way. The incensed sentry then rushes at us, but is casually dispatched with a single strike. After eliminating the Breton, we have two choices to proceed, either the main gate or side gates. Congruently, we take the direct route, as the large portcullis gate is simply opened by a nearby lever, and while the side gate would have afforded us the ability to sidestep any mercenary patrols, we have chosen the direct route, and simply make a beeline to Roderick across the bridge. Seeing our sleeping target above, we enter the tunnel below him and find at the end of the long hall fitfully sleeps the Red Guard Warlord, and we move to jostle him to no avail. A pop-up then reads, Roderick's skin is pale and covered in a sheen of sweat. It's obvious he's struggling for life against whatever illness has claimed him. Although we've foregone any semblance of stealth, we know our time before we're found is short. We then take our mace and then crush the feeble man's head like an old coconut, sending his corpse sprawling off the bed in a heap. Her quest then updates reading, I've completed the contract, but not as directed so the bonus is forfeit. I must now return to the sanctuary and speak with Ochiva to receive my reward. We then check the fallen red guard's body and find a paltry ten gold on his corpse and pluck his pants off his remains as a final act of disrespect. Rushing out of the fort the way we came and hearing the echoes of angry voices trailing impotently behind us, we escape such unscathed. Arriving back at the Chaden Hall Sanctuary, we find a slightly disappointed quest giver, Ochiva, back turned to us in her quarters, who, upon our return, admonishes. Roderick is dead, and Sithis is appeased. Unfortunately, the same is not true of the client who arranged this contract. You were to avoid detection and kill Roderick by means of poison, yet you failed to follow these parameters. Here is your reward, minus any bonus. It would seem you and Gogrin share a similar style. Now go, and do be more careful in the future. Instead, if we follow the contract's guidelines and, with some detective work, attempt to learn who put the death mark on Roderick, we can take the Argonian to Niva's advice and locate, close to the crumbling fort, the bare base of the rumoured remnants of the chapel to the southeast. Unlocking its single trapdoor entrance, our quest updates as soon as our feet hit the dank stone floor below. I have successfully entered Fort Such. I must now locate Roderick's medicine and replace it with a bottle of poisoned medicine. Skulking across the serpentine subfloor, we find it is indeed submerged as promised. However, as we make our way further into the fort, we also find the entrance is unfortunately guarded and press ourselves into a small encrusted alcove as a single high elf female mercenary makes her rounds. As the Altma passes unaware, we then tiptoe towards the main hall and find the gate is locked and we need a key. We turn back to the northern wall to spy the High Elf resuming her patrol. Forced to follow the guard, and with our only chance of moving on, we sleuth behind this Lanafil as fast as we dare and pluck the key from her back pocket with her none the wiser. Seeing her pass two of her companions ahead, we about face and race back up the ramp as quiet as we can to the fort's main hall's grating, opening it with the key and then overhearing a conversation from the guards loitering below. I just don't know. Is the medicine sustaining Roderick's life, or just postponing his death? How can he survive for so long with a fever so high? Roderick's fever is in check, unlike your tongue. How can you think such things after all he's done for us? For you, have a little faith. Faith? Are you telling me we're supposed to rely on the good graces of the Divines to keep Roderick alive? 
Even he would laugh at such nonsense. Then what would you propose? What more can we do? That medicine is keeping Roderick alive. For now, that's the best we can hope for. I know, Nisha. And I meant no disrespect. It's just that I hate waiting around like this, watching him suffer. As do we all, dear friend. Do not fear. I have been assured that the medicine will restore our Roderick to full health. But it will take some time. Then let us trust a bit less to faith and a bit more to our own strength. I shall guard the medicine cabinet myself, just in case. And I shall continue my vigil at Roderick's side. It's just a matter of time before our leader returns to us. I can feel it in my heart. With the guard's conversation now over, we frantically search close by for our quarry and see over the main bridge to the southwest an outline in the distance of the Breton warrior Gerard Milly. Thankfully, too far to spot us this time. Gathering our bearings, we turn and see in the dark hall to the north, above the lit ledge, is the comatose Roderick exposed on his bed. Hearing a commotion from the door whence we came, we dart to a nearby pillar for cover and see the two guards, Nisha and Ulmug, grow Kromgog following behind. The pair, it seems, are keeping to their word and, unfortunately for us, head inside the arch leading to Roderick. The red guard, Nisha, presumably to post up by his side and keep a vigil watch. The orc, as promised, taking his post at the medicine cabinet. Creeping behind the duo, we wait until they split off to their respective guard routes, seeing faintly in the distance Nisha by Roderick's bed. We then trace our way around the outermost square pillar and the orc warrior materializes in our path. We sidestep at the last minute around the pillar as the errant orc thankfully leaves his watch, questionably wandering in the nearby gloom. Free to complete our mission, we see Roderick's famed medicine cabinet, bathed in light and nigh unassailable, unless one was fully invisible. We then take the opportune moment before the orc returns to reach inside said cabinet and remove Roderick's precious life-giving medicine and replace it with our own sinister vial of poison. Our quest then updates and reads, The bottle of poisoned medicine has been placed in the cabinet and the real medicine removed. The next time Roderick is given treatment, he will die. I must now return to the sanctuary and speak with Ochiva to receive my reward. We're then free to retrace our steps out of the fort and to the safety of such as exterior. However, it should be finally explored before we seek out Ochiva for our reward. Who wanted Roderick dead? And why? Well, thanks to the developers, we can follow these clues. And according to a keen-eyed Redditor, whoever ordered the hit knew about Roderick's illness and wants the assassin to stay undetected. That leaves a small amount of possible clients. The player can overhear a conversation between mercenaries Ulmug, Gro Kromgog, and Nisha, in which Ulmug expresses his opinion that the medicine is merely extending Roderick's life and suffering instead of curing him. He seems a likely suspect, which means the hit on Roderick must be seen as a form of euthanasia. This is bolstered by the fact the developers made him stray from his guarding of the medicine cabinet from the logical position of the seat next to it bathed in light, and instead he loiters behind the rock pillars, creating a glaring opening for a hired assassin with instructions to remain undetected, conveniently leaving he and his fellow mercenaries unharmed. Assuming the orc wanted to take the stead of his dead warlord master, seeing as his fellow mercenaries were fanatics and it would take an only an accidental death of their leader would mean he would be able to take the mantle. Unfortunately, the wording of the contract means we could still wipe out the entire gang off the face of such and receive a reward. But how? Well, unfortunately for Roderick's death wisher, they stipulated the assassin remained undetected. On paper, that seems like a passive stealth sleuthing of the fort. However, 
We can kill each of the bandits individually as long as we remain undetected. Whether by leveraging summons or stealth archery, we will still appease Sithis without forfeiting the bonus and potentially murder a somewhat hasty contract giver before their intended rise to Warlord. Either way, fulfilling the bonus's requirements, heading back to Ochiva in the sanctuary, she greets. Ah, so you infiltrated Fourth Such, remained undetected, and replaced the medicine with the poison I provided. You are truly a master of shadow. It pleases me greatly to offer you this reward and a well-earned bonus. Go now, rest. I'll have another contract ready whenever you are. After which, we will receive a level-dependent gold reward up to 600 gold, a single infamy point, and our bonus, the Deceiver's Finery, a leveled outfit that fortifies speechcraft and personality. A handsome reward that will no doubt aid us in our upcoming contracts.